Whether you're a public adjuster, a contractor, or especially a policyholder, you're going to want to watch this video because today I'm going to tell you the top 10 ways to maximize your claim. And we're going to do it right now on the Commercial Claim Show in three, two, one. What's up, advocates, and welcome back to another episode of the Commercial Claim Show. I am your host, Vince Perry, owner and CEO of Elite Resolutions, a public adjusting firm and the Commercial Claims Advocate. And today, I want to get right into it. Listen up, advocates. Whether you're a public adjuster, contractor, or an attorney, if you have a client that has suffered any kind of catastrophic loss, whether that be by fire or storm or just any catastrophic loss that requires your client to have to move out and incur ALE and loss of use coverage, you need to think about looking at Black Diamond Services. This is an incredible idea for a service that I think is extremely valuable and I've actually personally used uh, for my clients myself. Basically what they do is they provide all of the necessary money that need is, as needed to be done for the homeowner uh, to go and move to another place, whether that be a hotel or another home or whatever it is, they basically bill through their insurance policies, loss of use coverage, and basically they provide financial assistance so that the insured never has to incur any out-of-pocket expenses. It's an amazing service. I love the people at Black Diamond Services, especially Millie Varela. If you just contact her and contact Black Diamond Services, I'm telling you, they're going to take care of your climate clients like you wouldn't believe. I personally have a client who's suffered a fire damage and had to use their ALE coverage. And all we did was refer them to Black Diamond. Our clients did not have to come out of pocket a single penny. Black Diamond prov provided all of the financial um, uh, money and they provided the actual location for the homeowner to stay. Amazing service. Contact Black Diamond Services today so you could find out more information for yourself. I want to get into the top 10 ways to maximize your claim. There's a certain definitely different ways of doing it, but there's definitely a set things that you should do upon filing an insurance claim to make sure that you maximize it, to make sure that you're getting the most value for your claim. And it doesn't necessarily mean hiring a public adjuster. It doesn't necessarily mean hiring a contractor. It just really means following a strict set of steps, a set of rules that you need to do to make sure that you're getting the insurance company's intention, that you're presenting them with the proper documentation, and that you're following up with them on a consistent basis to make sure that they're going that they're going to pay your claim not just going to pay your claim fast but going to pay it to what you actually need to put the home back together again so that's why this is a great video for not just public adjusters not just contractors but for policyholders as well so let's get right into it number one number one after a loss occurs take photos you have to take photos you have to document the loss you have to make sure that you've got evidence of actual damage because if it's the kind of loss where people come in and start tearing stuff out and you don't have any photos to prove that there was actually damage that occurred, that's not good. Also, if you have like a water pipe burst or something like that, and you've got water all over the house, take photos, take a video, take a video of you sloshing around through the house with water all over. Or if there's a wind event, if there's a windstorm and you suffer roof damage, take a video of the actual wind blowing out of your house. I'm telling you, photos, in my opinion, are the most important. That's why it's number one. Number one is you have to take photos. It's the most important part of the claim that we present to the insurance company to make sure we're providing the evidence that they need to pay the claim. Because the first and foremost, most important thing is proving that an event occurred. If it's a hurricane or an earthquake or something crazy like that, that's a different story. But when it comes down to just something insignificant or something, not insignificant, but just some random wind event, or if it's some random hail event, or if it's some random like pipe burst, take the videos right when it, I mean, it's just so important. The first question I always ask a client when I walk into the house is, did you take photos? And I hate it when they tell me no, but we live in a day and age where you've got your photo right here. You've got your camera right here. Take photos of the loss immediately. Number two, make the necessary repairs. You have to make the repairs. A lot of people are like, I don't want to touch anything until the insurance company comes. No, no, go ahead and do it. Just make sure you keep whatever thing that you actually repaired to show the insurance company. For example, if it's a pipe burst, uh, you need to make the repair to the pipe, keep the portion of the pipe that is broken and show that to the insurance company. If it's something common, like a pinhole leak that happens very that happens very often, uh, you and the, you send a plumber out to make a repair to that pipe. Keep the part of the pipe that has the pin, the pinhole leak. That's going to be a slam dunk on the insurance company 
are on the insurance claim to make sure that it gets paid. So make sure whatever repairs that you do make, and this is number two, make all of the necessary repairs. Whatever repairs that you do make, keep whatever it is. If it's a uh, roof, uh, wind loss or hail damage and you have a leak inside your house and you need to make a repair to your roof, fine, go ahead and make the repair. But in my opinion, I would like when I come to the house to see those damaged shingles, to see that damaged portion of the roof that was repaired. Just keep it. A lot of times, too many times, contractors, uh, plumbers, you guys do the repair, you throw it in your truck, and then you throw it away. To any other job, maybe, sure, but when it involves the insurance company and it involves an insurance claim, give it to your client, keep them, and tell them, hey, this is going to be very valuable for when you uh, when the insurance adjuster comes for him to take photos of. So keep whatever it is that was broken and that was repaired. Number three, sort of runs hand in hand with making the necessary repairs, but number three is mitigate your damages. Now, what does mitigation mean? We've done a video about this before on the YouTube channel, but mitigating, mitigating your damages means stop the damage from getting worse. One of those ways is number two, make the necessary repairs. But another one of those ways is just making sure that you're stopping the damage from getting worse. Now, when I say mitigate, a lot of people think, okay, we're going to send a company out to set up a bunch of machines and do a dry out. Yes, that is mitigation. And if it's a severe loss, you should definitely do that, especially a water loss. If you've got tons of water in your house, towels aren't going to cut it. Although that is considered mitigation, take photos of you drying it up with your towel. You're going to want to get a professional company out there to do a proper dry out. They'll vacuum all of the water up. They're going to set a bunch of set up a bunch of blower machines, uh, dehumidifiers and air scrubbers. Why? Because what happens if water is, is sitting for too long or is inside of your drywall and stuff like that? Guess what? Mold starts to occur, but it's your job as a homeowner to stop that mold from growing. And the way you do that is by hiring a professional company to set up the proper machines to make sure it's properly dried out. Also, blue tarp. Blue tarp is mitigating your damages. If a loss has occurred to your house and you have a leak now coming inside your house, you can do the number two of make a necessary repair to the roof, sure, or you could go ahead and you could set up a tarp in your roof to stop the water from entering. That's mitigating your damages. Another mitigating your damages that people don't really think about when the insurance company asks, did you mitigate your damages? You could just say, yes, I stopped using it. So for example, a shower pan, uh, a shower pan only leaks when you're actually using the shower. If you notice that there is a shower pan leak, stop using your shower. Do not use the shower anymore because it will, if you continue to use the shower, it will continue to leak. And by you stopping using the shower, it will prevent you from suffering additional damage, which is what you want to do. If it's a dishwasher leak and you notice that it's leaking every time you use a dishwasher, stop using the dishwasher. That is a way of mitigating your damages and stopping the damage from getting worse. So any kind of mitigation will do. You just want to make sure that you prove to the insurance company that you have indeed mitigated your damages and stopped it from getting worse. Number four, okay? Facts of loss. You want to make sure that you get the facts of loss. Now, this is good for public adjusters and contractors. When you enter a home, you have to interview the client. You have to start asking them what happened, what went on. What I like to do as a public adjuster, and for homeowners too, you should write this stuff down, uh, is just tell us what happened. Give us a story. What is it that exactly that happened? We want to make sure, again, in order to get coverage, we have to prove that an event occurred, right? A sudden and accidental event occurred. So write it down, you know, at what time of day did it occur? What was going on? What kind of, what kind of weather was it like outside? And we have a wind report that says a X, Y, and Z. What do you remember about that day? Well, I remember, you know, the umbrella outside of my house, it blew up and it went upside down. Uh, you know, there was a lot of wind. People People were complaining about X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. You want to make sure that you get the facts of loss because you're trying to prove to the insurance company a sudden and accidental event took place. Uh, facts of loss is, did you get any repairs done? Uh, who did you call? What was the first person you called? What did they do? What time did it happen in the middle of the night? Get a nice little document. What we do is every time we go into a claim, we interview the client and we document everything and we put it into our file and we have a section that says facts of loss. And it's just a paragraph or two of exactly what happened on this date, X, Y, and Z happened, blah, 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 blah. And this is what you present to the insurance company as sort of like, this is what occurred. This is the loss. This is the claim. Here's what happened. It's going to help you again in proving your case and making sure that your claim gets paid. So get the facts of the loss. Number five could be number one, file the claim and file it fast. Do not wait too long to file the claim. It is under your obligations, your post-loss obligations in your 
insurance contract with the insurance company, which is the insurance policy, which is a contract, is to file the claim fast, okay? Do not delay, okay? The longer you delay in filing the claim, the worse it's going to look on you, and the worse you're, you're not abiding by your post loss obligation, and the better reason they have to deny your claim. So file it fast. It, it, it's better if it's same day or the day after, but if you wait about 48 hours or maybe 72, that's already a little bit pushing it. If you're trying to make sure you get, you're getting your photos and you're getting a proper dry out and all that stuff, there's things that have to get done, but either way, you want to make sure that you file it and you want to file it fast. I would try to do it same day. One to three days is okay. After that, the insurance company starts to raise red flags and they might want to send a reservation of rights letter. It's not necessarily what you want. So get the claim filed and get it fast. Number six, meet with the adjuster and show them everything, okay? This is for everybody, contractor, public adjuster, policyholder. When the insurance adjuster comes out, make sure that you're showing the insurance company absolutely everything. Do not let them miss anything because they might be going in there with a broad scope and they're not really in, it's sure what to look for. It's up to you, whoever it is that is showing the insurance adjuster to show them, look at the damage that occurred. We also noticed damage behind the wall and we also noticed damage behind the baseboard and we did this because of this. This, okay. If you're up on a roof, make sure that you show the insurance adjuster every single shingle or tile or broken shingle, broken tile, crease shingle, whatever it is, show them everything and try to make sure that they're taking photos as well. Because there are times, even though number one is take photos, you'll be surprised. The insurance company may not even look at your photos. They're going to be definitely though, looking at the insurance adjuster's photo of the field adjuster that went out. They're going to be looking at those photos. So make sure that when you're there, okay, show them everything and make sure that they take photos of everything that you're showing them. So meet with the adjuster and show them everything. Number seven, now you've got the claim file. The claim is open. You've already had the insurance company, uh, the insurance adjuster come out to the property. Follow up. Follow up is so important, but there's a special way of doing it. At Elite Resolutions, we follow up every seven days. I feel like this is a good little time limit to give them a week to go ahead and follow up. I always say one to two weeks is okay. Never more than two weeks, but never less than seven days because at the end of the day, the insurance company does have I mean, hundreds of thousands of insurance claims that they're working. If you're going to be that much of a pest where you're following up every single day, they may have more cause and more reason to just ignore your claim. So we follow up every seven days. I feel like this is a good time, time limit to be sort of pestering them, but also give them enough time to respond. So follow up every seven days, make sure you're holding them accountable, ask them if they need anything. What else do you need? We've already given you all these things. What else do you need? Uh, don't waste any more time. I need this money so I can start putting my home back together again. Follow up is super, super important. I feel like it's what separates good public adjusting firms and bad public adjusting firms. And I also feel like it's what gets claims paid faster as opposed to claims getting delayed and delayed and delayed is the follow-up process. So make sure that you are following up at least every seven days. Number eight, provide the carrier with everything they request, okay? Throughout the insurance claims process, the insurance company is going to be requesting certain things. And the insurance policy does state that your duty as an insured, your post-loss obligation is to abide by any reasonable request by the insurance company. So if they send you a letter, which they probably will, that we call a request for information letter, you have to respond to that letter. Whether you have the information or not, respond to the letter. As a matter of fact, every single letter the insurance company sends to you or every single email, respond to it, whether you have the information or not, because the more often you respond to it, a couple of things are going to happen. You're going to have the information to provide to them. So you provide it to them. That's it. You got it. Anything else you need? No. Okay. Make a coverage decision. Or at least you respond and say, I don't have it. I told you I didn't have it. What else do you need? The point is, is by following up every seven days, by providing them with everything they need up front, and then responding and providing them with everything that they're requesting, there's no more delay that needs to be done. Again, this is a way to maximize your claim, but also rapid your claim, make it faster, right? That's how you do it is just by, I'm going to respond to all of your requests. I'm going to respond to all of your letters. I'm going to provide you with everything that you request. What else do you need? So by doing this, by providing the carrier with everything that they request, it really gets the claim moving fast and will ultimately maximize your claim. 
Number nine, we're almost there. Put a detailed estimate together, right? Okay, so public adjusters, we do this. Uh, contractors do this as well. If you are a policyholder, either hire one of us or hire an estimator. You could you go ahead and hire an estimator as well to put an estimate together because the insurance company is sending their field adjuster out and he or she is putting an estimate together as well but they're putting it on behalf of the insurance company. And I hate to break it to you, but the insurance company does have certain guidelines as to what they could write and what they can't write. They may not ever admit this, and they may say that they're just doing what needs to be done, which they are trying, I think, but a lot of times there are guidelines that they have to abide by. If you get yourself an estimator or you hire a public adjuster or you hire a contractor, we're putting estimates together of what actually needs to be done, okay? For example, if you have a wall that needs to be painted, you can't just paint that wall necessarily. You might have to continuously paint the entire house because all of it needs to be the same color. If you repaint one wall only and don't repaint the other walls of the same color, it's not going to look right. So little things like that, or if your roof is damaged and you see it's only a little bit of minor damage, but it's an old roof. And every time you start to do the repair, it goes on to eventually you having to replace the roof. A licensed and certified contractor and a licensed and certified public adjuster will make sure all of that is included. Or an estimator, like I said, will understand that as well. So the point is, is get an estimate together, okay, on behalf of you of what needs to be done and provide that to the insurance company. Because that's also a proof of loss. I don't want to get into that. I'll make that for another video. Uh, but you are required to provide a proof of loss within a certain time frame. Again, we'll do that in another video. But the proof of loss is, is it really it has a lot to do with the estimate. So provide that estimate slash proof of loss as soon as possible, okay? And get one on your behalf. Public adjuster or contractor can do that for you. Or like I said, hire an estimator, but get that to the insurance company immediately. It'll make them sort of have to review it and consider paying it or negotiating or whatever it is. So get that estimate and get it to the insurance company immediately. Which leads me to number 10, based on your estimate and based on whatever it is the insurance company is deciding ultimately to pay out, don't take the first offer. Now, if the first offer the insurance company is making is enough to put your home back together again and is enough to do all the repairs, then by all means, take it, you're done, claim is over. But again, unfortunately, in my experience, more often than not, the payment that is made out by the insurance company or what is known as the undisputed payment, which is the initial payment, is not ever enough for what you actually need to put your home back together again. It is called an undisputed payment because it's basically a payment that is, hey, here's 10,000 bucks. Here's what we think it's going to cost for you to do the repairs. If you come across an estimate or if a contractor says it's more, or if you start doing repairs and it ends up being more, feel free to reach out to us and we'll go ahead and review it and pay you more money. So that leads me to not just don't take the first offer, but if you do if they do make a payment and they're waiting on documentation and they send you a check, you can deposit that check. It is an undisputed check of what they feel it's going to cost. If you feel it's more, then you could negotiate. You could use that estimate that you've put together, whether by an estimator, public adjuster, or contractor, you could send that to the insurance company and you can negotiate and you can go through the estimate and you could figure out uh, what it is that they were missing on their initial payment and what it is that you need to put your home back together again. So number 10 is don't take the first offer. Take that estimate that you put together and try to negotiate on your behalf to make sure that you get the money you deserve to put your home back together again. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the top 10 ways to maximize your claim. Uh, they're all very important, uh, but the ones that really stick out to me are taking photos, mitigating your damages, um, following up with the insurance company, and really getting that estimate together. Because the estimate is the actual hard number of what you need, and that's what's gonna really maximize your claim, is by making sure you're hiring the right professional to put that estimate together to present to the insurance company to make sure they're paying more than what they're probably hoping to pay. Uh, because it's probably going to cost you what it's going to cost you based on what a contractor is telling you. So that's it guys. Top 10 ways, take photos, make necessary repairs, mitigate your damages, get the facts of loss on paper, file the claim fast, meet with the adjuster and show them everything. Follow up every seven days, provide the carrier with everything that they request, put a detailed estimate and proof of loss together and submit it to the insurance company as fast as you can. And remember, don't take the first offer unless it's good enough for you to do the repairs. If it's not, and if it's not by just one penny, make sure that you let them know that they need, that you need more money to pay your claim.
And that's it, guys. My name is Vince Perry. I am the commercial claims advocate. We train public adjusters all over the country and contractors and attorneys as well. We're on commercialclaimsadvocate.com. This is the Commercial Claim Show. We've got the Claims Game Podcast, and we even do industry meetups where we're always bringing the industry professionals together. We do them all over Florida and all over the country. Just take a look at the website, find out if we're going to go to a city near you because we are trying, because we do feel that we are stronger together and we're really trying to elevate this industry. But then again, I am also the owner of Elite Resolutions, a public adjusting firm. You can go on EliteResolutions.com and we've got much more information really dedicated to policyholders uh, who are looking to file a claim and need any assistance with that. And also if you are a public adjuster and you're looking for a family that you can come work for, that's what we do. Uh, we're always growing our team and expanding our areas of expertise. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, stay tuned for next week where we'll talk about something else and something more fun. So thank you guys very much. Have yourself a great week. Peace out.